Alright, greetings folks. This is the Black Weasel and today is my One Piece viewing of chapter 905. And we come off after uh, a two week break. Because of Golden Week and the authors, um, because of the Golden... Take something to talk, my brother. Yes. Yes. Also. Okay, uh, so yeah, the author, author took a break, so off of One Piece for two weeks, so now here we are today. 905, name of the chapter is called A Beautiful World. Now, we go jumping into the, the tales of the self proclaimed Straw Hat Grand uh, Fleet, Volume 35, The Olympus Arc, The Pirate Life. At 6 a.m., Olympus is folding pajamas. Oh, that's a bright. This is like an early way to start in the morning. <clears throat> now the captain starts off with the um with the narrator saying, two years ago in the summit war war between the forces of Marine headquarters and the YP pirates, the Marines were victorious, but the battlefield Marine was completely destroyed. It had been a marine symbol of justice for many years, but in order to prepare for the wave of violence to come in the pirate era, the world government built a much stronger fortress, stationed at the entrance of the new world. This is the new stronghold of justice. It has the arches like McDonald's. <coughs> yeah, it definitely looks humong humongous. Um, the ships <coughs> look small in comparison, and the uh, Marine Fort was completely destroyed by um, Whitebeard's two Quake uh, moves and one, and one of my Blackbeard's move, and he was dead set on destroying that Blackbeard himself. And the caption says, "Here stands new Marine Fort under the, the command of the new Fleet Admiral Sakazuki." And so uh, this is a map diagram of. Um, the old Marine Four, the current uh, G1 branch. It was stationed um, next towards the Holy Land, Mary um, uh, um before in the Grand Line. That's what uh, the old Marine Ford was. In the um, in the New World, on the other side of the Red Line, the new Marine Ford is on the other side of Mary Joie. Anyways, the, the narrator says although its location was changed. Has changed. Marine headquarters rule as the gate to the Holy Land, Marriage Wall, where the Celestial Dragons reside, has not changed one bit. Oh. And Sakazuki is pissed off because he says, Fuji Joa, is in Marriage Wall. Oh! I haven't seen him in a while. I wonder what he up to. He got banned for him from every Marine brace, but not in Marriage Wall. Because that's a Holy Land. Alright, the scene, uh, now the scene begins with Sakazuki being really angry, and he yells out, "I thought I made it clear. He wasn't to be allowed us. He wasn't to be allowed to enter a single marine base until he brought back the heads of Straw Hat and Law. How dare he re return so shamelessly, that brat!" Then um, the marine uh, says, "Yes, sir. We know that those uh, were your orders, but..." And Sakazuki says, "Then why didn't you throw him out?" And then uh, the Marine says, well, he came on with a perfect logical argument, and we, we didn't know how to respond. <gasps> he roasted them. He said, in, in a flashback, um, Fujitora says, this is not a Marine base. That's true. Uh, the navies are like the front lines of the Celestial uh, Dragons. Um, the Celestial Dragons, the, the World Nobles, they're above uh, the Marines. The Marines, they're just uh, basically dogs to protect um, them. And then Sakazuki says, there's nothing but a ludicrous techni uh, technicality. 
Does, does he think that he's some kind of a whimsical monk? Well, yeah, he's dressed like that. And then he knows something out of the blue, and Sun Goo Goose shows up. He says, the job is difficult, isn't it, Fleet Admiral? And the Marine uh, says, Sun Goo Goose on. And Sakazuki says, shut up, you semi-retired old man. And um, uh, Sakazuki asks, who else is going to marry, uh, marry Joa? And the Marine says, Admiral, uh... Green Bull. I'm not sure how to say it. It's Rai Could You Goo? Rai Rai You Could You? Rai. Uh, I'll just go with uh, Green Bull. Uh, it'll be easier to say. Uh, oh, uh, the author made it uh, easy for Fujitora. Fujitora. Anyways, um, the scene changes and the capture. And narrative says here, behind the G1 branch on the paradise side of the Grand Line is the Red Port, a giant port that hugs the Red Line from, bo from both sides. It has become the route the world government takes to cross the Red Line towards the other side. Um, in this port is a lift made out of bubbles that leads to the Holy Land marriage wall. It is called a bandola. And one guy says, look, ships are coming in one after another. And another person yells out, make way, royalty is passing through. Oh, pfft. What's so great about that? Pfft. Oh, wait, uh, another thing um, that, that happened around the same time. Um, last Saturday, it was, it was the a royal uh, wedding. Like, I, I really don't care at all, but I'm saying this as a, a, like a major coincidence of this chapter. Um, River 8 um, is happening right now where all the... Uh, uh, kings and queens and princes and princesses from all around make the way towards one place for something that happens every four years. Last Saturday, it was the a royal uh, wedding. I, uh, Prince Harry uh, got uh, married towards uh, towards uh, Meghan. And when somebody yells out, wow, it's Beard the Six from the Rosh Wong Kingdom. And uh, someone yells out, those are the those are the uh, Madro uh, princesses. Huh. They're covered up. Um, and then one person said, "They're so cute. Like he has four prince. He has four daughters, but uh, all of them uh, look pretty look pretty much the same." And another person says, "And there's King King Hamburger from the Bollywood Kingdom. Bollywood. This is like Indian. Um. Uh, this is like a um, Indian version of Hollywood." And there was somebody who's asking why he's walking so slowly. And then King Hamburger says, I may walk slowly, but I never turn back. And someone's yelling out, Kia. And someone yells out, and that's Queen Mororon. And the translation, it could be, um, the translation says it could be a reference towards Moron, a type of rice cake, not for a real dumbass. And she comes from the Tajan Kingdom. And the other person says, she's absolutely, she's absolutely stunning. And King Muramara says, cheers to all the watching eyes of this world. And another person says, yeah. Oh. And then um, another person says, it's King Tacos from the Shinshano Kingdom. Wait, so they name after food? Like, um, one's beer, one's hamburger, one's a Muramara, one's King Tacos. And King Tacos says, if you're going to near a while you're alive, then at least die standing. And he's wearing a cactus hat on the top of his head. He's like a, a Mexican. Yep, yep. He has a Mexican mustache. Uh, the whole get up. And then uh, someone yells out, Ah, that ship, they're finally here. Who is it? Who is it? Who is it? And <coughs> the citizens yell out, It's the mermaid princess. And another person yells out, And the great knight of the sea, King Neptune. No, that's not the great night in the sea. Jimmy is. He has a bounty of over 400 million uh, berries. And someone says, Prince uh, Fukabushi too. And the caption says, Although the Raju Kingdom has been a member of the world government for 200 years, this is the only second time attending the rivery. I wonder uh, how it was the first time. And then, um...
the mermaid uh, sure she see says so this is the surface and um somebody yells out mermaid princess uh, what a beauty Prince Surashoshi, Garp Sama. Wait, Garp, he's here for the first time um, uh, uh, in so long. And Garp says, Ah, I thought I was going to die down there. Bwahaha. And then the, one person yells, this, gather, this, this gathering is already big news. Wait, is that Morgan's? I can't believe it. It's Garp for the first time in a while. He's eating rice cakes. Uh, and then one person yells out, what unspeakable beauty. And another person says, she's even more beautiful than the rumors, rumors say. Shall we print a super special edition for the pres for the occasion, Mr. President? And it's Big Morgans. I can't... <laughs> Big News Morgans. He's here. <laughs> now, um... Now the photographers uh, yell out, oh no, President Morgans has been completely enchanted by her. And, um... King Nam2 says, Garp, Shiro Shosei is so popular. And then um, Garp says, There have been rumors circulating all the way to the, onto the surface about a mermaid princess so beautiful that even a pirate queen, Hanka, couldn't compare to, to her. What is this, a beauty contest? And Garp says, eh, Because she's that beautiful, all of her uh, expectations have been surpassed. There's also the fact that she's gigantic, gigantic, bwahaha. <coughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, I get it. And Sura Shosi says, hey, Luffy-sama's grandfather, is that by any chance what you call a forest on the land? And Garp says, that's just a tree. And somebody yells out, hey, Garp the hero. I wonder who it is, who it is, who it is, who it is. And he's, and this, oh shit, it's Steli. Uh, that jackass face. He says, you know who I am, don't you? And Garp says, who the hell are you, you shitty brat? Get out of my way. No, it's not Steli, it's Steri. Ugh. And Steri says, shitty brat, did I hear wrongly? And, um... His wife came on and she she yells, "How rude!" Um, and, and she says, "That's right, Steri. There's no other way to explain this, uh, his insolence." And Steri says, "I am the king of the Gua Kingdom. My name is Steri, and since you are a citizen of my kingdom, you're also one of our subordinates. It will do you well to remember that." Oh, you know, um, I finished uh, Earthbound. Uh, I finished playing Earthbound like yesterday, and. Um, this man uh, really, really reminds me of him from time to time. Anyways, uh, Morgan says, The king of the Gua Kingdom, despite its reputation as a peaceful rural country, a great number of accomplished crim criminals have come from there. Garp is an exception to that, but otherwise, there's Dragon, Sabo, Fireface, and Straw Hat. What an interesting place. Anyways, uh, there's a, uh, a scroll of King St St Asteri's trivia. Um, the, cap and the caption says, uh, Goa Kingdom is a place where Luffy, Ace, and Sabo lived when they were kids. Asteri is the adopted younger brother of Sabo, who was a member of a noble family. Asteri waited originally for an opportunity to form a bond with the royal family and eventually marry uh, the princess. Natua Kanet. And the translation means Neto Kora means something also referenced. To Marie Antoine, as stated by Oda in Volume 84's uh, sub question corner. So, what uh, is the princess gonna die? Because that's what happened when the French uh, Revolution uh, occurred. Like, the royalty uh, and the kings and queens of France uh, died, and then the same thing happened in Russia. But, Oh yeah, um, also Dragon's death, I mean Dragon's birthday is on October 5th, was when the uh, uh, um, October Revolution occurred, so that's how like communism uh, got uh, brought in towards uh, Russia. Anyways, um, after the suspicious death of the king and the prince a few months ago, Steri ascended to the throne. Garp says, move, move aside, your face is annoying to look at. And he has a face fault, he starts crying, he says, he's so rude, I don't really know how to respond. 
And Garb said, um, Stary is whispering. He says, let's cut to the chase, Garb. Tell me about your connection to the normals. I want to become a celestial dragon someday. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. That's not, gonna, that's not how it works. You have to be born in it. That's how a, a royalty uh, works. Especially in the new world. They get born into it. Meanwhile, in America, um, the people... Uh, the kinds of people that uh, get looked up to th these days are, are these poor people that come from shitty backgrounds to become um, uh, somebody in the fields of musician, acting, athletes, like especially the football players and basketball players. Uh, uh, these guys uh, you, uh, come from like shitty backgrounds and poor uh, neighborhoods, so that way they, they become like uh, really rich and successful. So. That's what people look up to. Like no one looks up, no one watches the royal wedding. If right, anyways, uh, I'm I'm going into deep. He says, "A garb says, want to be a scumbag." <laughs> and Siri says, "Huh? No way! Did he not hear me? What he just said is worthy of the uh, is worthy of the death penalty." Uh, a garb says, I, "I should have said that. Forget about it." <laughs> That's funny. Uh, anyways, um, Stereo thinks to himself. He says, "This guy is so scary." <coughs> and King Neptune um grabs on towards Stereo, and and he says, "Young one, is everything okay?" And he thinks to himself, "Huh, that thing moved." And Stereo says, "I thought he was a statue. Is he a giant? The ones that eat people and melt rocks with their saliva?" And Stary said, no, wait, huh, these people, teeth, scales, and that skin tell, skin color, don't tell me they're the half-fish people, the fishmen race, wait, half-fish people, that reminds me of Jack, he really is a fish man, like, he has sharp teeth, and Stary said, they are classified as fish, and there are rumors that when you come into contact with them, you'll contract a, uh, contact, contract a rare disease, and Stary gets really, uh, angry, uh, scared, he said, yeah, don't come near me, and he faints. He is foaming in the mouth, and um, someone yells on the Dende Mushi, and then number two, Bondola Fly is now departing, and the garb says, well then, take care, see you later, and then, and Sura Sura says, thank you very much for your help, Luffy Simon's grandfather, and she says, the journey up to the surface was fun, and Sura Sura waves goodbye, and garb waves goodbye as well, um, the bondola goes up, up, up. And Shuri Shuri says, so high, amazing. And she looks up and her eyes get big. And um <coughs> And King Nim says, Shuri Shuri, is something wrong? And Shuri Shuri says, Father, it's the sun. And she also says, Big brothers, look, the sun is shining short brightly. The vastness of the sky has no bounds. Even the sea is endlessly illuminated by the radiant sun. Wow, it looks so beautiful. And then she says, Wow, this really is beautiful, Mambo. And then um, one person says, To think that such beauty exists on the surface, what a beautiful world this is. Oh, yeah, hence the name of the chapter. But yo, um, get this. That happened on the scale of uh, Mary Joie. I mean, that happened near the place of Mary Joie where the world nobles um, look up. Uh, um, they go up and down on that, and they can travel whenever they want. Like, uh, it's kind of like a great thing and a bad thing at the same time. Anyways, uh, someone says, indeed, the light that comes from the mangroves at the bottom of the sea pales in comparison to this. And Shira Suri says, Father, uh, and she st started crying. She said, if it's possible, I would very much like to live up here. I want everyone in our kingdom to see this the sun world of light. I mean, this, see this world of sunlight. Anyways, um, Neptune, Fukuboshi, and the two guys uh, are really uh, happy at seeing him, her smile. And, and Neptune asks, let's ask them. Another person says, that's why we're here at the Reverie after all. Anyways, the scene changes towards the Holy Land, Marriage Wah, and there was a kachak noise. So the Den Den Mushu conversation got, uh, is over. And someone says, Sakuzuki san said, that I should find. You and make you leave. And 
And uh, Fujitora says, do you want to try? And another person says, Rahaha, please spare me the trouble. I don't want to fight with you. And and another person, and one person says, well, it's not like you planned to destroy the conference or anything, right? I wonder who it is. And uh, Fujitora says, hee hee, well, what I want to destroy is the system. And Fujitora says, oh, and thank you for the meal. It's delicious. And the person says, well, you went on a long trip, didn't you? How was old man Vegapunk doing? Oh, uh, this person seems to know Vegapunk. Vegapunk. Anyways, Fujitora says, I didn't get the chance to meet him, but he created something incredible. And Green and the guy says, I see. So in other words, we no longer need the seven warlords. And this man, uh, the other person says, starts laughing. Ra ha ha! You're crazy. Seriously. Um. Anyways, uh, Fujitora says, he he he. By the way, why don't you eat some of this delicious foods? Food. Are you still fasting? Wait, this guy is fasting. <gasps> yeah. Uh. He. Uh. He's doing it. Uh. During Ramadan. Like I'm fasting as well, but it's a it's a water diet for me. Like, cause given my weight, I can lose easily. I can lose weight easily. So I just need uh, water. Just I just need liquids. The game may buy. I don't need like physical foods. Uh, oh, holy shit! We have a debut of the Marine Headquarters Admiral Green Bull. Anyways, uh, Green Bull says, "Raha, if there were a pretty gal here who would spoon feed me while saying ah, and I eat, my eating is a, is a pain in the ass. So I haven't bothered eating in th three years." Raha, ha Whoa, he must be very thin. Or very um, uh, strong. Well, he's really strong. That's the point. But the, but he must have like incredible mental spirit to do that. Ah, that's bullshit. Like uh, that's a character introduction of his uh, of his face uh, of half his face. That's not an in introduction. What the hell? Anyways, the scene changes towards the Kumbaga Kingdom, and someone says, uh, fighting the world government for the sake of the fishmen. This situation is complicated, isn't it, Koala? And uh, the girl says, since the Raiju Kingdom is participating in this bravery, and Koala says, no, Betty son, we don't want to topple the world government itself. Um, Ko uh, Koala says, but rather the celestial dragons that control them. Yeah, oh, that makes a whole lot of sense. Um, the Gorosai. I mean, the celestial dragons is uh, up, is above the uh, is, is above the Gorosai. and these and those highest political stars they run the government and the CP zero uh, Cyberpol as well. Anyways, the scene changes on the red line, and someone says, uh, "Yeah, did you did you did you see that just now?" And that was scary. And the person says, "Goa's king is Goa's king is so no no noisy." And Steri says, "What's well, so high? This is so scary. The wind is shaking us too much." And Steri says, "Just now, I saw a giant picking out at us from inside the wall. He he was holding a harpoon. Yeah, they, yeah, that's King Neptune." And when, uh, King Hamburger says, "What kind of hallucination are, are you having? Don't you see how high we are right now?" And King Steri says, "I really saw him." And King Steri um, says, "Yeah, look over there. Those are crows. If they come over here and pop the bubble, we'll fall." And this a person says, uh, pers "Another person says that's an unusual sight at this height." And Shiro Shiro says, "Wow, so these are the birds I heard that heard stories about." And she says, "They're flying this way." And Steri says, "Hey, guard, load your gun. Shoot them down. Hurry before they pop the bubble." And the guard said, don't worry about them. Crows have never popped the bubbles before. So please, rest sir, King Steri. <laughs> it's, it's Sabo. I can't believe it. He's here. This is like one of the best chapters I've ever seen. Like, <coughs> Not filled with action, but yo, it was fu really fun to watch. Uh, well, that's the end of that.